So in this video, I wanna talk about how do you write an analysis section within a research paper, whether it is for an undergraduate program or a master's program or, or a PhD or for researchers, it's really important to think about the analysis section, something that you're actually detailing, the section that you're actually detailing of what you actually did or what you're planning on actually doing within a research paper. So if you don't know me, I am Professor Dave Masak. I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There's so many people that help me out that I wanted to pay the favor for it to help you out as much as I possibly can. So I remember analysis section is really just the write-up of what you actually did or what you're planning on doing, right? So if you're thinking about this is what you're gonna do, you write it up in that sort of context. But then you can also come back and think about, hey, this is what I did, or this is what we did, and we're gonna write it up in this sort of way. So the key with an analysis section, a lot of people sort of think, that it is about writing everything that you actually did within what, you, what you're about or what, what you actually did in the study. And, and that is a misnomer. That is a complete misnomer. What you're thinking about is the reviewer and telling a story on the person that's actually telling a story to the person that actually is performing um, the analysis of, of, you know, whether it's a reviewer or your professor or whatever, you're actually going through and writing thinking about, hey, how is this person going to interpret what I actually did? So it's not necessarily that you have to detail absolutely everything because it's impossible to do that. You're going to realize quickly that you're just going to have a mess. You're either going to be erring on too little or too much of what you actually did. Instead, what you should think about to sort of ground yourself is think about, hey, the, um, the, the reviewer or the person that's going to be reading this paper, how are they thinking about it? How do I step them through such that I can hold their hand and say, hey, you know what, this is an interesting thing of how I did it. Um, and, and then maybe you can pursue that in the future. So you don't have to detail everything in terms of this step to this step to this step. But what you're doing is telling a story on how do you actually get to where you're going so that the people can actually create it on their own they can reliably um, validate what you're doing, but at the same time, it's a story, right? That it is, hey, we've got this mess, we've done all of these kind of things, but what we're gonna do is cut an arrow or cut something straight through it if this is what we, what we did. And so you're going to have to, um, what I think about is that there's moments, there's all these decision points that you make, right? When you're doing any sort of research. The research is a mess, it always is, a total mess. And you have to think about, I'm going to choose this or this or this or this or this or this. Or this. And you choose, okay, um, you write down when you have those sort of moments where you're like, it's not clear for what I'm going to do. You um, detail, okay, this is a possibility of choosing this way, but we chose this way because um, this is better for our situation and our context. And then there are limitations to why we chose this, but you know we will leave that towards a, a later section within a research paper. So it's important to think about you know not only what it is that you're doing um, in terms of this is what we're doing, but thinking about the research question that people have when they're actually re um, reading or reviewing your paper. So they have a research question. You should hopefully have framed that. And then what you do is you think about this research question. Hey, how is it that performing the thing that I did is going to answer that particular research question? And then when I actually did this, what are reviewers, what are people are going to think about when I actually did this? They're inevitably going to have all of these questions, right? If there's a smart audience, they hate your research. I guarantee they hate it. They don't, they don't like it. But what they need to do is you need to hold their hand and walk them through. And so the more that you hold their hand and before, you know, just in that moment, you're, you, you have to think about, okay, if I say this, reviewers and other people are, are going to say, oh, wow, you know what, they should have thought of this. And then, you know what, here's the tricky thing. You write that in there as like, they should have thought of this. And this is what your particular response is going to be at that moment. And so as they're getting to the cusp of like, hey, they should have thought of this, you write it in, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, wow, they thought of everything. I can't believe it, right? You're walking them through as a story and thinking about, okay, how are people going to think about what I did? 
And if we think about what they, in, in terms of that view, as it's, it's an unfolding story, it's not something cut and dry, it is not boring in any sort of way. We have all of these problems, it's a mess, but we decided to do this particular route. Hey, that is the way to do it. So I've seen an, um, what is called kind of an ideal route, right? Like an ideal framing. If we had an ideal situation, that's the way that we should do do it. But we don't have an ideal situation, so we have to think backwards on how to actually do that. That framing actually works pretty well, um, and it's really nice to do that. But then eventually, you might have to diminish what that ideal world looks like because it's going to you know, raise questions and it just adds a lot of extra text that um, not a lot of people do. So what you're doing ultimately at the end of the day is talking about the dependent variable, the thing that you're interested in, and then coming back and thinking about the independent variables and how they're related to that dependent variable, whatever those things look like. And ultimately, it's always centered around the thing that you're trying to explain. That's your dependent variable. And you're always coming back to that, right? So it's not going uh, the other way around. It's, it's really thinking, this is what we're doing. So the general structure is that you present the setting, right? That there is some sort of setting involved in what you're looking at, a short little um, description of that related to what you're trying to study. Then get into, hey, this is the data that we gather, the sample, the population, whatever it is that you're doing. And then after that, you're like, hey, we're going to talk about the dependent variable and how I measure that or how we thought about that. What is the dependent variable? And then, hey, we're going to talk about all the things that we're interested in that might manipulate that. That's called your independent variable, right? And as you're thinking about those things, you're really thinking about what is the research question? How do I construct it? So the research question becomes clearer and other people understand it. You know, maybe it is that you control for other things, then you put that at the end, and then you get into this, this discussion of what you actually did, right? And sometimes people will put, um, you know, equations there to, to discuss what does the empirical model actually look like. But uh, that, that's not always the case, but sometimes you see that as well. So this is pretty universal across a lot of different um, settings in terms of presenting information in that sort of way. So hopefully this helps you in terms of um, getting to that conversation. Remember, it's a conversation, it's a discussion. It's always this unfolding story that other people should actually see. All right, take care. Hopefully you learned something. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.